Okay, uh, players and coaches are excited to get this season going. Uh, it's been a, a very productive off season. Uh, had a really very uh, productive winter conditioning, solid spring football, uh, summer summer uh, conditioning. The guys worked hard, and then the fall camp was very productive. So, so the guys have been working hard ever since January. Uh, we've been pointing to this game for for a lot of months now. Um, I guess I've been told it's the highest ranked opening opponent that we've played. Uh, Ever, I guess, if, if uh, my information is correct. And so, no, it's not. What is it? Uh, correct me. It, uh, um, Spit it out. Oklahoma was number five. We oh, okay. Was that here or away? Oklahoma. Away. Yeah, home, home opener, I guess I should say. Highest ranked home opener. So, anyway, Pittsburgh's very good. That's the bottom line. Uh, they got a lot of weapons. Um, tremendous running game. Uh, Deion Lewis, 1,800 yard rusher, or just under 1,800 yards. Uh, the receiver, number 82, Baldwin, tremendous player. Uh, two great defensive ends, led the nation in sacks last year. So, uh, you know, a lot of positives uh, for the Pittsburgh team. Picked to win the Big East Conference. But, uh, you know, our guys are ready. We're, uh, you know, been having, uh, you know, great practices. Work ethic is good. Focus is good. Concentration is good. We're relatively healthy. Uh, you know, we won't have Shaq for the game. He's out indefinitely, and J.J. Williams is, is questionable. But other than that, other than the guys that were surgical guys that were obviously going to be out for the game, I think we're in decent shape. So we're excited to get going. Uh, it should be a sold out, standing room only crowd. The bus is at 6,000 strong plus. And, uh, you know, we're, we're excited to get this season kicked off. Kyle, could you uh, compare Pittsburgh's defense, the one you'll face Thursday night, to something similar maybe you guys have seen in recent years? Is a TCU comparison fair or accurate? Yeah, that's probably the best comparison uh, schematically. You know, they're a middle open. Uh, defense, a lot, of, a lot of cover four, quarters coverage in the back end. Not a lot of blitzing uh, until you get in the red zone. They don't blitz hardly at all. At least that was our MO last year. Um, two very good defensive ends. Uh, the Romeus kid is a, is a tremendous player. And, and uh, you know, that's where, you know, that, that's going to present uh, challenges for us. But uh, there's a, you know, personnel wise, they're very athletic. So that's probably the best comparison is, is with uh, what we saw from TCU last year. Coach, um, based on what you've seen so far studying this team. Give me your thoughts on uh, Dave Wanstat, his coaching style, what you know about him. Have you ever met him? I know you, I don't think you've ever coached against him, but your thoughts on him? Never met him. Followed his career. He's had a great career. You know, he's been a lot of great places, done a lot of uh, very good things in his coaching career. An NFL background, and that, fl that NFL flavor spills over into the pit uh, schematics, you know, with their offense. It's a, it's a two-back power run attack, which, you know, in this day and age of the spread, that you don't see that very often. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of NFL influence in what they're doing scheme-wise. He's done a great job with the personnel. You know, this football team is much more talented than the 4 pit team that we played in the in the Fiesta Bowl. There's, uh, there's really no comparison as far as the, the talent level, you know, throughout the roster. And so I think he's done an excellent job. And, you know, as I said, I've said many times, it's all about recruiting, and that's where they have really done an excellent jobs in their recruiting. A thought or two on uh, Tino Sinceri, their quarterback. Doesn't have a lot of snaps under his belt, uh, kind of almost a first-time starter coming in, starting on the road. Uh, what's been your experience against playing against first-time quarterbacks when they're making those first starts on the road, Kyle? Well, good and bad. You know, sometimes you, you get a guy that has, has no experience and comes in and lights it up, and then – uh, you know, other times it takes them a few games to get settled in. And so, uh, you know, what I can say is, you know, we have some, some, uh, some of Tino on tape. He's, he had threw the ball 17 times last year. I think he was 10 to 17 and, and uh, really didn't get a lot of uh, playing time other than at the end of games. But, uh, you know, he's a quality player from what we can tell. Uh, interestingly enough, his dad and I were seniors the same year back in 81 at college. His dad was a great linebacker at Pitt. And uh, that, you know, uh, Sal Sinceri, and that's his son. And, uh, you know, so there's a little bit of a, a connection there. But, but uh, you know, we typically with a new quarterback, you know, test him out. How's he going to handle pressure? How's he going to handle coverage disguise? That type of thing. And so all the things that uh, really any defensive coordinator would throw at a new quarterback, you're going to see Coach Sataki uh, throw at Sinceri. Coach, of course, with your defense, you're very deep as far as the defensive line. But what, what do you – what are you most questioning going into this game against Pittsburgh as far as your defense as a whole? What are you most looking forward to see out of your defense? Well, we've got two safeties who have never started in Division One game. You know, Taplin Ross had uh, you know some experience last year. He got in some ball games, but he was behind Robert Johnson and Joe Dale, so didn't get a lot of opportunity. And then, of course, Brian Bleck and our true freshman is starting opposite Tap Tap. So, so it'll be uh, you know 
interesting to see how uh, particularly Brian reacts when the bright lights are on. You know, he's a very mature kid and has done a very good job in practice. And, uh, you know, we expect him to play well, but, you know, you never know how those guys are going to make that transition. Uh, Linebacker-wise, we've got a lot of guys uh, that will be playing for us that had a lot of reps last year in quality situations, not just mop-up work, and, and although none of them were starters. But they're all guys that uh, played good football for us last year. Uh, the corner, you know, Chapman uh, is opposite Brandon Burton. You know, Brandon Burton's a proven commodity. Uh, Lamar Chapman on the other corner played a lot of nickel for us last year. In fact, he was the full-time nickel back. He's making that transition to play uh, a lot of the 43 packages along with Conroy Black. And so, uh, you know, this will be Conroy's first Division One experience as well. So we got, you know, a few guys back there that uh, have not uh, had a lot of D1 experience, but they've got ability and they're, uh, you know, they're tough, tough kids and, and uh, you know, they're excited to get their opportunity. What is it about Rice Cycle Stadium that uh, makes it a tough place to play exactly? Well, I think it's first of all, it's the must. You know, it starts with those guys. They're, they're one of the best student sections in the country, in my opinion. Uh, when when uh, Coach Meyer first took over, I think in 02, the must was like at three or 400 people. Then in 04, uh, Coach Meyer's first year, we got to you know, somewhere close to 1,000. Then it was like 1,200 in 04 or, or the next year. And then... Uh, you know, 6,000 now, this is an all-time high, and it just keeps getting bigger and better each and every year. And I would say that is probably, uh, not probably, but that is without a doubt the, uh, the main uh, part of the atmosphere at Rice Eccles Stadium is the must and, and what, they bring to the, what they bring to the stadium.